Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you some examples on how to pass complex data around between pages in a native script Angular 2 application. So this is actually part two uh, of two for when it comes to navigating with native script. I actually did a video not too long ago as well as a blog post on how to use the Angular 2 router, the stable version of it. Um, so if you if you haven't seen that video already or you haven't read the blog post, I recommend that you do. Uh, because the project that we're going to be going off of is the project we created in that particular tutorial. Um, but you should be able to follow along anyways, uh, even if you haven't. Um, I've, I'd like to think that I've, I'm going to make this pretty easy, um, as there's not a whole lot to this particular uh, application. So I'll just give you a run through real quick on what we did in the previous tutorial uh, before we start creating new stuff. So as you can see, I do have my simulator up on my screen. Uh, I have one page, I have a next button. When I click it, it navigates to page two, at which point I can navigate backwards. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to pass around URL parameter values, um, but those are very simplistic. Usually they're only string values, um, but there may be a scenario where you need to pass around objects or maybe even more than one uh, parameter in a uh, different fashion. So I will be showing you two different ways to do this. Uh, this is by far not the only two ways that you can do this. There are many ways to accomplish this task, uh, but these are two of my personal favorites. Uh, so before we go ahead, uh, I do have a two-page application created. Uh, I have a page one uh, TypeScript file, uh, which really only has uh, a tap button. So when I tap that next button, it'll navigate to page two, and page two uh, doesn't really have anything in it. It's just that, uh, that action bar. So the first way that we can actually do this, um, instead of using URL parameters, is we could actually use query parameters. Uh, so query parameters are just like query parameters in any kind of web application. So instead of adding parameters to the, to the URL with slashes, you're now using the question mark symbol and you're saying something like ID equals, or and then ampersand, and then some other query parameter, and so on and so forth. Uh, so let's, let's take a look at how to do that with native script. So I'll go ahead and I'll go to page one.ts, uh, and inside of page one, what we're going to do is we are going to include another dependency at the top on line two. We're going to say navigation extras. So with the navigation extras, uh, we can actually construct query parameters now. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and try that out. So let's go ahead inside the on tap event. Let's go ahead and say let navigation extras and then it's of type navigation extras. Oops. And that equals an object. And inside of that object, uh, this is one of many parameters of part of navigation extras. So there's there's more to navigation extras. We're only touching upon the query parameter aspect. Uh, so what we're saying is we're saying query params, and this itself is an object. Uh, so in here we can have any flat parameters that we want. It will get mapped appropriately. So let's give it a shot. Let's say uh, first name, uh, and let's say this is Nick, and let's say last name, uh, and this is Raboy. Now before I go ahead and, and go any further, I want to I want to note that if I go to my app routing.ts file where we defined our routes, I am not adding anything extra uh, to this particular route for page two. Nothing extra is necessary when it comes to query parameters. Uh, so I'm go going back to page one, uh, inside of this router.navigate function, outside of the array, I'm going to pass in navigation extras. Uh, so that variable that we had just created. So if I go ahead and, and, and now go to the second page, so the TS file, inside of my constructor, I can now do a little bit more. Uh, but before we that before we do that, we do need to include the the activated route. Uh, so very similar to the URL parameters. So activated route from Angular Router. Uh, all right. So with that added, now we can go ahead and inject it inside of the constructor. So private route activated route, and then we can subscri subscribe to uh, any kind of event. So let's say this dot route dot query params dot subscribe and inside of it we have params and we're going to be able to capture any parameters that we want. So let's go ahead and decide where we want to store those parameters that we capture. So we'll say public first name 
This will be of type string, public last name. This will also be of type string. And then inside of this subscription, we can say this dot first name equals params uh, first name because that's what we called it on the previous page. Uh, and then this dot last name equals params last name. And we're going to go ahead and present this on the screen just to show that it's possible. Uh, so going to page2.html, uh, inside of the stack layout, let's go ahead and create a label. And we're going to say text equals hello, and this will be first name because that's the public variable, and last name, that's the other public variable. And I'm going to save it. So I, I am going to run it to see where we stand so far. I'm going to start live sync. So TNS live sync iOS watch and then emulator. And this applies for Android as well. Uh, but I do have my uh, iOS simulator running already. All right, so it is up. So if I click next, hopefully it does show a label now. Uh, and it did. So it said, hello, uh, Nick Raboy. Uh, so the thing about this is, so if we go to uh, page one, let's let's just go back to page one.ts, the TypeScript file. Uh, you'll notice that even though the data that we're passing around is a little more complex than just the strings, uh, it's still very flat. Uh, so there's there's different ways that you can you can go about this. Uh, for one, uh, which is probably not my favorite approach, uh, but you can actually serialize a string. So let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, so let's say, um, let's now call this person, and it's going to be, um, a, we're going to serialize it as a string. So we're going to say json.stringify, um, this is going to be an object now, and you'll see where I'm going with this uh, real fast here. All right, so person is now a serialized object. And let's go ahead and make it a little more complex. So we're going to say address. Um, we're going to say uh, this is an, a nested object. Let's go ahead and say city. Let's say San Francisco. Let's go ahead and say state. And let's call this um, California. So save it. So it's no longer a flat object. And then it's actually no longer going to be an object at all. But going back to page two, uh, well, first of all, uh, it won't make sense to uh, to do this. So, um, but before we get there, let's go to page two. Let's go ahead and create a new uh, a new variable here. Let's say public person, and let's call it any. Uh, and inside of here, inside of our subscription, we're going to say this dot person equals. And we're going to say JSON dot parse, uh, and let's say uh, params. We're going to turn it back into an object. Let's say person. And this should work. Um, this won't make sense anymore, so we're going to comment those out. And we're going to go back to our HTML file and we're going to say person dot first name, person dot last name. And in theory, this should work out fine. If it hasn't blown up on me. All right, so I'll click next. It still says, hello, Nick Raboy. Uh, let's confirm that our actual change took effect. So we'll go to page two. Um, what I'll do is I'll say uh, console.log, and we'll say params person. So that should still be a string, uh, which is fine. I'll save it. We'll go back into our uh, application here. Should show up in my logs at this point, so I'll click next. Uh, and it did. So this is a string which we now um, deserialized back into an object. So again, uh, that's query params. We're using query params up until now. And like I said, it's not my favorite solution to have to serialize this data that we're passing around. It's definitely an OK solution. It works. Um, but you know what? I feel a little funny about it. So that brings us to the next approach. So the next approach is we can actually create a shared provider. So a provider that is shared across the application. Uh, so what we can do is we can create a new a new file, a new uh, file and folder. So I'll exit out of this. Uh, I'll clear my terminal and I'll say make directory uh, and I'm going to create um, all subdirectories with it. I'm going to say app. I'm going to create providers and let's call it data. So this is a data directory that I have inside of my app directory. I'm also going to say touch 
app providers data and I'm gonna call this data as well and it's gonna be a TypeScript file perfect so let's go ahead and open up that file and it is empty right now so let's go ahead and add some code to it so we're gonna say import we're gonna say injectable from angular slash core the next thing we want to say is we want to say at injectable and we're going to create our class so our injectable class so we're going to say export class data and our class is actually going to be super simple uh, what we're going to have is we're going to have a public uh, variable called storage it's going to be of type any and our constructor won't do anything so we're going to say constructor uh, but it's just going to be empty uh, so now what we want to do is we want to inject this into um, the, enti the entire application as a whole. And you'll see where I'm going with this in just a second. So what we want to do is we go want to go to main.ts. And what we want to do is we want to add it to the provider list. So we're going to say import data from, um, it's actually, I think it's in uh, providers slash data slash data that should be it um, inside of the ng module uh, we're going to add, add a new uh, item to it we're going to say providers this is going to be an array and then we're going to add data so at this point we can now inject data across our application uh, so let's go ahead and give it a try uh, we're going to go back into page one.ts uh, we're going to say import data from and we're going to say providers data data uh, going into the constructor uh, we can say uh, private data and it's going to be of type data so we're just injecting it into the constructor and now going into uh, the the on tap method let's go ahead and say this dot data dot storage equals and let's uh, let's just copy this whole thing in there So storage is now holding this object, and, it, and it's not the it's not the least complex thing in the world. It's not the most complex thing in the world. It does have a nested object in there. So I've just added it. Um, it says I have an error somewhere. Uh, it says a comma is expected. Ah, so it uh, I actually am missing a bracket. So let's go ahead and add that extra bracket in there. Perfect. So it's now added. Uh, so I'm going to leave in the query parameter stuff for now. I do have the storage um, and I'm going to go ahead and go to the next page. So page two dot TS, I'm going to follow the steps that I did. I'm going to say import data from providers data data. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject it. So I'm going to say uh, private, I'm going to say data data again. So nothing new here. Uh, but however, instead, uh, outside of the subscription here, I'm going to say um, this dot, um, let's go ahead and change it up here. So let's say this dot person equals this dot data dot storage. Uh, so it, sh it should be in line now. Um, so let's let's uh, I'm going to work on removing this so that way it's fair. I'll actually comment it out rather than remove it. So we're no longer looking at any kind of past parameters as far as navigation extras. So if I if I rerun this, um, in theory, it should work out fine. In theory. So I'll click next, and it still shows there as hello Nick Raboy. Uh, so as you can see, there are there are other ways. So if, if we wanted to go with the second solution, let me just strip out all of the stuff from the first solution. So that way you can see the bare necessities. So that way it won't confuse you on what you actually need. So I'll remove this. I'll remove the activated route. So that's all you would need uh, on page two if you wanted to go with the provider approach. And then on page one, of course, we wouldn't need these navigation extras. Um, and we actually wouldn't need to pass anything at all because we're saving it to this this storage uh, variable, and we're just passing it along. We're we're 
sharing it between pages. Uh, so those are two different ways to pass more complex data around a, a native script uh, Angular 2 application. It really doesn't just apply to native script. It, app, it applies to Angular 2 in general. Uh, so don't don't be confused on if it's if it's just a native script thing. It's a, it's an Angular 2 thing actually. Um, and online, if you if you read around, there are other ways. Uh, some ways suggest using data uh, and resolvers. Uh, but I mean, figure out what your needs are. Uh, as you can see, this this wasn't very difficult to do. Didn't require a lot of extra code. Uh, worked out quite nice.